So first off on category two is aggressive dogs. Yeah. Christy? Yeah, this is um, this is kind of a big topic because this is something that is a big challenge these days. Yeah. I mean, always has been, but especially with fear aggression now. Um, but aggressive dogs, you know, you as clients, you've got to be 100% honest and upfront with the groomer when you call to make the appointment because most groomers, like us, will take on the challenge and work with an aggressive dog, mm -hmm. um, but we need to know what's going on first so we can handle the situation properly. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's a difference between, what did, what did we decide to call it? We called it um, task, task aggression is what we kind of dubbed it, where if you have a dog that comes in and just doesn't like a certain part of the grooming, like its nails done, or, or cotton in its it, ears, cotton's in its ears, or you know, brushing it, or something to where it's going to be a biter. That's something that's kind of easily worked around, but we need to be made aware of that because, mm -hmm. you know, a bad bite can be career-ending for a groomer. And, and that, who wants that on their conscience? Who wants that? Nobody. <laughs> yeah, and you know. If you do not disclose your dog's aggression, that could be a legal liability for you as well. So that's not any road that you wanna go down. Because what we find is that people either think that their pet was mishandled mm -hmm. by another establishment or another groomer, or they're afraid that the groomer won't groom the dog and the dog needs to be groomed, so they just lie about it or don't say anything about it. Right. And that all ends very badly. I do not recommend that, and it's not a good situation. And the other thing that we um, are seeing a lot of is um, fear aggression, and fear aggression is incredibly dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, that is a dog that normally has to be turned away from a salon because there is so much behavior modification that needs to be done at home and you need to be hiring a dog behaviorist and trainer to be working with your animal before it can even come in the salon. And we'll we'll go over that in a whole another video, um, but it kind of, it's, it's anxiety and fear and aggression. aggression and proper not understanding your dog at home and handling them properly in certain situations and when it's all wrapped up in one it's a very very dangerous situation it's normally if it's just a task aggression where they know oh hey you know my dog doesn't like it when you do the ears mm -hmm. or my dog doesn't like it when you do the nails or and this is their reaction usually any service is fine whether it's you know salon mobile the the groomer at the yeah. vet in home as long as the groomer is made aware you know there might be some groomers that say mm, sorry i don't walk on any aggressive dogs mm -hmm. you don't find that very often but um so any of the services would be fine so long as you communicate with with the uh the groomer about your dog's situation i don't think any groomer should be grooming a okay. fear aggressive dog okay. unless it's being worked with a, a dog behaviorist mm -hmm. and everybody's on board mm -hmm. on what's going on with this dog so um, it can be very bad uh, next on our list we have rescue rescue dogs so we do a lot of rescue yeah. dogs mm -hmm. um again with them the things that you're going to have to think about in your mind and go over the list is um, what are the dog's triggers at home? Because mm -hmm. uh, rescue dogs can be kind of a, a special uh, situation where they create kind of an unhealthy bond with their, their owner and they can be very protective of their owner and have more of a fear anxiety and be you know lashing out and snapping at people and be very fearful. So um, any, any of these would be, uh, the service would be good for a rescue dog, um, again, you need to let the groomer know at time of booking that you have a rescue dog, you don't know their history, you don't know if they've ever been groomed, you know, you're starting from scratch. And don't it's know gonna... if they've ever bitten anybody. No, but, yeah. no, and, and you, know, you know, unless you know that they've bitten somebody at home or a stranger mm -hmm. or something, and it's going to take an intermediate to an advanced That's person funny. because you don't know what's gonna happen. If you have a beginner working on a dog like that, chances are if something goes sideways they're just going to call you up and say hey you need to pick your dog yeah. up i can't groom it right. and that's not good for anybody so waste the groomer's time and you know it stressed the dog out and you didn't get a grooming service yeah so that's what i would suggest yeah so next on our list is anxiety Hey. okay <laughs> well this is you know this is another big one for us along with the um fear aggression mm -hmm. um because anymore these days compared to when I first started my career 
The amount of dogs that have severe anxiety is just through the roof right now, yeah. and it's it's very sad. Um, a lot of dogs, because of bad breeding, overbreeding, um, and dogs. What well, a lot of dogs are being rescued too, which is yeah. wonderful. But yeah. again, they have their their issues with their being very attached to their owner. Um, and we. We've been just seeing that a lot recently, you know, after the pandemic, a lot of people yep. thank you for rescuing dogs during, you yep. know, that quarantine period. But, you know, we're all now getting back to work and these dogs are experiencing you leaving. So separation yep. anxiety is through the Terrible. roof right now. What do they call it? Post pandemic pest yeah. pet disorder, I yeah. think. Um, mm -hmm. And so they're seeing depression in dogs. Um, they're seeing severe anxiety, mm -hmm. um, pulling all their hair out. Um, did I say depression? Yeah. Depression. Um, bad behavior where they're they're eating your house yeah. when you leave or barking, you know, those kind of things. And we see the same thing here in the salon, but they're not at home. They're yeah. in a stressful situation with strangers and then it just heightens the situation. A tip for you people who you know you have anxiety dogs before you go into um, to have them groomed um, really good exercise before Please. they go in and it's it's anxious reactive energy mm -hmm. and if you can you know get that out so they're using the thinking side of their brain and not just the reactive mm -hmm. side that's going to make it easier for everyone yeah. involved and you know we've talked about this a lot in the salon how you know us girls really feel like working on a high anxiety dog is is really difficult and it's very very dangerous because the dogs are so unpredictable mm -hmm. whether they you know then there's nothing you can do to calm them or talk them down when they get in that level all you can do is just shut the whole situation yeah. down because they'll be standing there perfectly still and then all of a sudden they just decide hey I'm out of here yeah and they just go to try to bail off your table um, or you'll be you know scissoring on their face and they'll be still and then all of a sudden again they have that moment of I'm out of here yeah and they're diving I call them scissor divers <laughs> um, they dive their face right into yeah. the scissors and it's like it's so stressful for the dogs, for the groomers, and not only that, but for us groomers, every minute that we're handling that dog, they are a liability for us. Yeah. I don't want to be responsible for nicking or cutting your dog or maiming your dog mm -hmm. because it's being a lunatic because it has severe anxiety. It's constantly flapping its tongue and you're trying to scissor yeah. around its Yeah, and mouth it's not and like they're like, ah! just annoyed because they're wiggling. That's yeah. not it. This is this is something completely different. This is yeah. very uh, it's it's severe anxiety and it's something that has to be addressed because, you know, and you don't want to shop surf. You don't yeah. want to start shop surfing with these dogs that have these special needs because the anxiety is just going to get worse. You're just going to be passing them around from groomer to groomer. And then you're going to have a dog that nobody can touch yeah. and nobody wants that. So it's not like groomers are complaining going, well, your dog just won't hold still. That's not it. It's a very, very serious situation. Mm -hmm. And dogs that have severe anxiety can also become fear aggressors and they can be very dangerous biters because you never know what's going to set them off. Yeah. And all of a sudden you've got teeth in your face. Okay. So grooming services for anxiety dogs. Okay. Honestly, I do not recommend in salon grooming for anxiety dogs. And I even though we thing. still, we still see so many of them, it's so frustrating. Um, but because there's so much going on in a salon um, and they'll feed off the other dog's yeah. energies. If there's other dogs that are anxious or barking, whining, it just heightens mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, there's too much going on in salons and I just don't think it's a good idea. You know, sometimes we can do, again, first dog of the day or last dog of the day, but now the ratio of dogs that have, you know, special needs versus the dogs that are just, you know, really good dogs to groom, it has far surpassed that. Yeah. So there's only so many days in a month and so many hours we can work. And so, so many of those first and last appointments have been taken up by these dogs that there's just none left. Yeah. So, um, but with anxiety, I would definitely opt for in-home um, and uh, mobile okay. for sure. Um, and, you know, at the vet, <laughs> again, it's like no dog really likes to go to a vet office. Yeah. So, but still, if you have a dog, a groomer, I'm sorry, that's working alone and in a quiet room, um, I would prefer that over um, in salon. salon. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Senior dog. Senior dog. Okay. 
those are those are a tough one too yeah <laughs> um you know we all hate it when our dogs get, get old, old and yeah i can speak from experience right now because i've got a little 17 year old dog at mm -hmm. home now um that is very geriatric that has some medical issues and and he just has old dog issues yeah and um i can't touch him anymore i can't do any grooming any basic anything to him without him having a complete panic attack yeah. and that's something that a lot of people don't understand and they don't understand that it happens because you but know dogs are like humans they get old they get dementia they yeah. start deteriorating <laughs> like, i mean think about it if you had your sweet little old granny that was 90 years old and she had alzheimer's and she's living in a home would you tear her away from that home and take her to some busy salon and have her hair done that would be no <laughs> that would never happen and it's no different for dogs you have to compare you know human experiences a lot with dog experiences because you know they're they're living creatures yeah. that have feelings and emotions just like us and um older dogs that have had their senses go whether it's you know sight or their hearing um, and if they are getting a little bit of dementia, arthritic, arthritic yeah. any, any of that, um, it is very, very stressful um, for them to be groomed. It's stressful just to ride in the car. I was going to say, just the car ride over yeah. is enough stress for them to have an, a panic attack, yeah. you know? And, and, and most, most pet parents are like, they don't understand the stress that it causes them um, to be at the salon or any kind of service for grooming because they just see that at, see them at home sleeping all day and quiet and comfortable mm -hmm. it's not like that at mm -hmm. a salon and and quite frankly it's you know just like my my little dog um it would be very cruel to take him to a salon and it probably would be honestly life ending yeah i was like because fatal. he really yeah be fatal because he's got a heart murmur he doesn't have congestive heart failure but he's got his you know serious some heart issues and you get that stress level high enough and they're either going to faint or it, they could go into cardiac arrest and so grooming geriatric dogs is a very very sensitive subject mm -hmm. it takes an intermediate to advanced groomer yeah. And, you know, we have so many clients that are in denial about their dogs getting old and they still come to us with a list of demands of the haircut. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, listen, none of that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna get what they get. And yeah. if they are having geriatric panic attacks while they're here and they're fainting, passing out, like who cares about the haircut? Like at this point, they get their basic needs. We want needs. them to be comfortable. We that's... want them to be comfortable. And the basic needs, like for my dog, making sure his nails are done, his little bottom is shaved so mm -hmm. there's no messes getting stuck there mm -hmm. and that he you know he can see uh, get the little crusties out of his right. eyes and trim his bangs that's it he doesn't get baths anymore he can't handle any of it and it is not worth risking your dog's life For to a get group. a haircut yeah. it's just not so honestly i do not recommend um salon grooming for a geriatric dog that has those needs that doesn't do well mm -hmm. um, or has you know severe medical issues I would definitely um, recommend the groomer that works in the vet office because there are times where if they get too worked up that they need a little puff of oxygen or something or the vet can be right there if there is a cardiac moment or anything else whether it's tracheal or, or whatever just right. due to, to high stress and high anxiety um, or you can um, opt out for a mobile groomer if they do work on geriatric dogs and you know let the vet know that hey i'm grooming your client it's a geriatric client and i'm going to be parked in your parking lot and i'll be there with the owner and if there's an emergency we can just run through the door at the vet and get help but yeah. that's that's about all i would recommend for that that's kind of a yeah. it's a touchy subject for me because people just try to push and push and push about yeah. getting these old dogs done and i Sorry, I decline. Next on our list is medically fragile dogs. Yeah. Those dogs intertwine all the time. Oh, so yeah. we just discussed about senior dogs, but a lot of it also comes down to medically fragile as well. Yeah. So one, again, yeah, again, ahead. just have really good communication with, um, I think the medically fragile, any of the services would be great. Of course, it depends on what the medical situation is. If it's something that can be life threatening, always opt for the groomer that's in the vet office and opt for that mobile groomer that maybe would park mm -hmm. in the in the vet parking lot 
Um, but we get a lot of dogs that have just recently had a surgery. Right. Um, or they have disc issues in their back. They have uh, collapsing tracheas. They have hip dysplasia. They've blown out their knees. They have bad meniscus and, mm -hmm. um, you know, patellas. Yeah. And those are all things that are really important for us to know. You know, when they have these issues, there's certain ways that we have to handle these dogs and we need to be made aware because, you know, even like if it's a very serious disc issue, you know, they can have a problem. If they're starting to flail around and we don't understand that they have a back yeah. issue, bam, something can happen and they're paralyzed. I but mean, it takes, you know, a, a seasoned groomer, it a does. groomer with experience Again, you want to intermediate to advanced yeah. groomer that understands you know, the safety of handling a dog yeah. and understands what these medical issues are and have worked with many of those dogs and knows the ins and outs and what to do and what not to do. Right. And then, like we say at the end of the day with all of these categories, you know, they get what haircut they get. And, you know, even though we do our best to do a certain look, yeah. um, but at the end of the day, they just want to be clean. The nails need to be on the sani, that kind yeah. of thing. And that's, so just throw away that list of yeah. haircut demands because we get through it best we yeah. can. So I guess we kind of wanted to talk about um, dog groomers in general because now we've gone through and and made the list of your potential dog's Me. needs. Yeah. And then we told you if it was an advanced, you know, or intermediate for groomer, some of them. for some of them, you know, that, that needs to be, um, you know, we have terms in the grooming industry to describe, you know, certain groomer skills. Uh, baby groomer is definitely um, a brand new groomer that's been grooming usually less than two years. Mm -hmm. And they know the basics, you know, and they're still learning just their craft. And a lot of them don't know how to handle dogs with Behavior. behavioral problems or with medical problems. It takes lots of hands-on salon experience where you're dealing with these dogs every day and you have a mentor mm -hmm. that is is teaching you about it, you know, when you when they see things that are happening, you know, because you know, half the time. We're not licensed veterinarians. We are not dog trainers and behaviors, yeah. you know, behaviorists. We're not, you know, we're not a dog boarding facility. Like and, we're just hairstylists. Yeah, for we're dogs. hairstylists. <laughs> and so, you know, unfortunately with these special needs, you know, we kind of fall into all of those categories. That's the hardest thing that we're trying to explain here is it's it's not as easy as just giving a haircut. There's so much more yeah. to it. And people are expecting us to be all of those things. And For that is com on the it's, <laughs> it's completely unrealistic. Yeah. And when you do have a groomer like that, that not only is high skilled in, you know, their styling skills, yeah. but knows how to look out yeah. for all of these other problems, it's not going to be cheap yeah. and it shouldn't be cheap because that all the continuing education and all the years of experience, that means something and it has value. Because we've spent three hours of our time and because your dog has these special needs and maybe we couldn't give your dog the haircut that you wanted or we couldn't get the service completed, doesn't mean that you are not gonna pay for it. Right. And we've run into that too, where they're like, well, you didn't do anything. Well, yes, I did. I just spent two and three hours with your dog that, you yeah. know, I, I did the best I could for what what you dropped off, right. you know? And that's another thing that people have a hard time understanding is you, you're paying for the time that you, the groomer had to spend with your dog. When you're looking for the right groomer, mm -hmm. first of all, you need to go over the checklist. Right of all the categories that we gave you and said, okay, you know what? That sounds like my dog. Yeah. That sounds like my dog. Write all those down. Then you wanna get referrals for whether it's a mobile service or a salon or, or a, a, a groomer that works at a vet. And if you put it out there on, you know, like a Facebook, um, like Your a neighborhood, neighborhood page yeah, or, yeah. or whatever, or even talking to people in the dog park or whatever, if you hear the same name, coming up over and over, that's a pretty good indication that that's where you need to be. Yeah. So don't go jumping on the internet Google, looking yeah. for, for reviews and stuff. That's yeah. not where you wanna be. You wanna hear word of mouth, but first you need to go through all of these categories and make sure that you're, you're matching the right service to your dog's needs. Then you can find the groomer within those services. Right. 
So, um, and find out and ask the right questions on how many years they've been grooming and if your pet is even something willing that they'll they'll be willing, you know, to yeah. work on. And um, something we'll talk about in another another video. I know I'm going on and on. No, we'll you're have good. To edit a lot of this, um, but there is a groomer drought. Uh, no joke. It's a serious problem. Um, groomers have absolutely disappeared. And um, there was a big groomer drought before COVID happened. And then after COVID, it's even worse. There's so many salons that have closed their doors, sold, gone out of business. You know, groomers that have decided to stay home with their children or go back to school for and something where do the, different. Those dogs go? Or, and where do those dogs go? I mean, because each groomer can have over 200 clients. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of people that need to find other groomers. So finding a good, reputable groomer um, and somebody who's willing to work with your special needs dog um, you need to stick with that person and you know you you need to take care of each other and yeah. they're going to be more expensive but the alternative is not a great one yeah so um, I guess that's our best advice to you is to take care of the groomer that you've got if you've got a good one yeah um, because they're they're dropping off like flies, flies? Mm -hmm. yeah that's true <laughs> all right you guys I hope you found this video helpful like we said, we are always here to help answer any questions that you guys may have. So definitely leave those in the comment section down below or hit us up on Instagram. Like we said, we just love to hear you guys, your guys' um, comments, questions. Yep, just talk yep, to us. The input. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, like Shlisa like said, we're here to help and we're trying, you know, the, the point of the channel was trying to bridge the gap between, pet you know, owners pet, and pet, pet owners and pet professionals yeah. and have a better understanding of both sides. And we... The ultimate goal is doing what's best for your dog. Yep. So there we go. There we go, honestly. But um, hope you like this video again. We will just see you guys in the next one. Bye. Bye.